very excited. I have my little my little stinger bop going on. Welcome to Encounter Roleplay. Welcome to Monday to A Song of Ice and Fire, Game of Thrones, The Crownlands. Hashtag, hashtag, retweet, and all of that fun stuff. Let's go around and say hello to our wonderful Monday cast. And let's go clockwise around the display. It's all reversed. I'm so confused. Uh, let's <laughs> begin with the wonderful Amelia Tyler. Welcome back, Millie. Oh, hello. I am so glad to be back. I've missed you lot so much. Um, you've been busy. Yeah. Some and decisions uh, have been made. Yeah, stuff and, <laughs> stuff and things, you know, but you've been busy yeah. too. What have you been up to for the last oh, couple of weeks? Lots of things I can't talk about. And also house renovations. I'm living in a building site at the moment and I have no working toilet. It's been a really fun week. <laughs> Save me. Take me to a world where that's normal. <laughs> but I'm really looking forward Welcome. to this. This is, this is going to be an interesting night, I think. Uh, as you can see, Millie, you have a keep dice up on your screen. Uh, oh, I believe this was that. unlocked by a big crits donation from someone in chat. Uh, so that's up there for you. No one else has one <laughs> chat, at the I moment. Need it. <laughs> but chat, if you do want to interact with today's game, you can donate. The options are down below and throw them in chat. Let's move on around our little clock to the wonderful Shauna. Hello, Shauna. Hey, I'm excited to be here. I'm a little bit time zone guinea because my body does not know what time it is because of time zone change. And I'm just happy to play and I'm hoping that the character that I illustrated for our guest does not kill us all. That's the spirit. Shout out to <laughs> Shauna who does do the amazing art that you can see on screen. Go and commission her if you have the money. It's well worth it. Uh, Shauna, anything you would like to plug today? Anything you want to shout out that you've been up to? Um, I, yeah, I just did a uh, sticker set for Asians Represent podcast, and that should be in, in live, I think, in a little bit. They're going to give them out, I think, at a couple cons, so I'm excited to see those out in the live. Awesome. And Nuno, how are you doing this week? Hello. Very good. Thank you. Uh, but as opposed to Shauna, who's hoping that this new character doesn't kill us all, I'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen, isn't it, Charlie? Look at me. Look at me, Charlie. Yeah, I, kn I know it. I know it. <laughs> uh, but it's going to be fine. We have a lot of people today. And uh, Billy's back. Uh, maybe Tarla is back. Maybe not. I don't, I don't know. Uh, but it's going to be fun. So I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I am so excited, and I'm very excited to see the wonderful Sam is with us again this week. Hello, how you doing? I'm doing good. I'm good. hyped. I'm like... <laughs> how are you doing, Sam? I'm feeling a little peaky, I'll be honest, but I cannot stay away from the juicy fruits. So, I am here, about 95% here. I have juicy chin. fruits are great Present. for your health, they're not great if you're peaky. In jokes. Moving on. <laughs> I'm super glad you're here. Thank you for rushing back from work to hang out with us tonight. Anything you want to shout out that you're up to, Sam? Uh, just catch your sister campaign of this uh, after the fire on a Thursday. It's over at Follow Black Cats. It's a Twitch channel and the Twitter um, where we will soon be reprising the guest appearance, I believe, of a certain Mr. Greg from uh, Tales from the Grim. Uh, and yeah, but we all we were having lots of juicy fruits last week, and they will continue to be pulpy and juicy and awesome. So follow that. Pulpy, juicy, awesome. Susanna Grace. Great segue as always, Charlie. Thank you so much. I will put that on my CV, my Twitter bio. I'll. Uh... <laughs> Hi. I'm glad to be back uh, and get out of this hell house. Um, lost cause. I'm done. I'm done with the Tremaines. I'm out. I'm out. Bye. Stupid horse trying to kill me. Stupid ghosts. Stupid. You started it. Stupid stranger. <laughs> stupid everything. I'm. I'm done. I'm out. That's uh, the spirit. <laughs> and it only took us six episodes. Hey, it took me five to get kidnapped in the other one, so I'm on about par, right? That's, this is about... 
Um, but yeah, uh, my plug uh, this week is to check out my channel tomorrow where I'm playing The Witcher tabletop RPG, where I play the lovely Isabelle Juliette Marie de Leonco, to some fois sorceress, and hater of the Church of Eternal Fire. So tune in for that at 8 30 pm GMT tomorrow, which is 4 30 EDT. Awesome. And a massive welcome to the Killer GM, Matt joining us as our special guest today. Hi, everybody. Uh, we are going to have some fun today, I am most certain, and definitely not any death whatsoever. I promise. This time. Maybe. I had um, a really great chat with you this week, Matt. Uh, very excited to meet the maester. Uh, but what else are you up to? Oh, gosh. Uh, well, every other Sunday, so didn't do it yesterday, but... This coming Sunday, I run on my channel, Matt F7, the dreadful beat of DJ Strahd, a retroverse remix of the Curse of Strahd campaign. Uh, if you want to see Strahd being a trashy Eurobeat DJ, uh, leading a bunch of people around a vectored and upside down Baravia, uh, come check it out. It's a fun time. Our characters this last week uh, were chilling out in Velaki uh, on Strahd's behest, and. Uh, found out that uh, the Burgermaster was a, uh, a killer clown monster who was trying to eat reality. So, yeah. We, uh, some things happen. And things might get a little weird this week. If you're, if you dig a, dig a little bit of, dig a little bit of wrestling and that sort of thing, you might want to, might want to tune in. So, yeah. I'm super excited to be here today. I didn't know I needed any of that stuff in my life and yet instantly I now do. Bravo. That's a, that's a, that's a mood. It's a habit. Thank you. Speaking of a habit, it is Monday and it is time for us to return to Westeros. Where this morning House Tremaine have gathered its forces and those who have been sent from neighboring houses to assist and they will scour the land looking for lost daughter of the house, Tala. Uh, remembering what was said last time, we have Jamie and Adeline out leading groups within that. Jamie, of course, with his cadre of men that he bought in King's Landing before returning to the house. And uh, Asta and Allegra. Allegra, you are packing, I believe, to leave to King's Landing to head on up the coast to your home at House Dorsey. And Asta, you are still in recovery from the mysterious sickness, the poison, perhaps. And you had some business at the house, so that's kind of where we're going to begin as you await the arrival of the maester from House Gaunt, who you have been told is on his way. Adeline and Jamie, how do you divide your forces? What is your approach to your hunt for Tala? <clears throat> I mean, Shauna, I reckon we, we do the I do, we do the police searching thing, like people a few <laughs> yards high up apart and proper combing the countryside kind of thing. Lots of yep, just come yelling, that kind of yep, thing. Just come to land and make sure we don't like miss anything. Yeah, I think we want to get a, a, as big a spread as we can with as many people as we have. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is going to be a, an extended search, a very precise and grueling search through your lands. Mm -hmm. And these are lands that have been washed for two days by this awful storm which has raised the level of your neighboring river and has made the terrain very muddy and slippy, which is going to kind of slow down progress, which might be a little quicker on a drier summer's day. But the sun has come out and you can hear the birds twittering away and you can see down to the town and you can see there are hearth fires that are lit and things seem quiet as the, the grounds are kind of colored blush by the sun rising. You begin at first light, for it will be a long day. Um, Adeline and Jamie, as you leave the search, I would like you both to make warfare command tests. Sweet. As it's using a very similar skill to organize your men and women doing the search to uh, do it. You, you're not ordering them to kill people, but you are ordering them to do a very specific task and keeping them in line. Okay, so 
Jamie, I'm going to suggest that you're leading the crew that's going to the river side of the Tremaine's lands, and Adeline is doing the woods and gaunt side of the Tremaine's land, the eastern side. Mm-hmm. Well, northeastern side, because I'm thinking on the wonk. But uh, yes, so Jamie, you head down towards the river. You pass the mouth of one of these tunnel entrances, but you can see where it's fallen in. And remembering back to that night, this is where that wind was blowing up and just ahead of here was if you followed it through that's where you found that handprint on the night when you were hunting through the flooded cellars and the flooded tunnels it's slippery and you reach that fallen log where Asta had tumbled from his horse during the hunt and over the other side you see this great reservoir of water that is forming this almost a lake and the ground becomes really slippery and people are complaining And it's fairly open land, so it's kind of begrudging as you move more and more towards the river. And you can see people kind of faltering in their tasks, wandering off random directions. And as you call to them across the land, as you try and keep them in line, they've got better ideas. They're kind of doing their own thing. Meanwhile, Adeline moving into the woods, you are more regimented, you are more precise. You see someone walking out of line, you correct their behavior. This is important. This is Tala. And everyone loves Tala. Everyone cares. And if they don't care, you're going to make them care. It's very (laughs) important. And you track into the woods and into the more covered areas, crossing over the main road that passes through the train lands. And as you do so, you see a number of people are moving around. You get them stopped. You ask them if they've seen anyone. And the reports that you get are that, you know, a number of people are coming in and out of the area, some to market, some to King's Landing, some are coming from the north, and there are also people leaving the Tremaine lands. You don't have roadblocks set up, but you have had your kind of patrol going on, keeping track of what's going on. You are relieved to hear there are no reports of extended sickness. Whatever happened at the hold has not flooded out into your lands. But people will seem nervous, and especially seeing this great investigative force pouring out of the cold and spreading through the lands. What action would you both like to take? As this is kind of the state of affairs you find yourself at, kind of two, three hours into your search. Hmm. Because how far we get, I guess. If she's gone over the river, then we'll probably lose her tracks. Yeah. I mean, hopefully, she'd be on this side of the river. So, if not, it's bad. Um, Charlie, how deep is the river usually? Um, the river's probably, like, you couldn't wade all the way across it. There are, there's a bridge to cross it, and then it goes to that secondary river, and then the other side of that is Redbrass Field, for kind of geography sake. So, it's the kind of river you need to use the footbridge. You could swim it. Um, it's not too fast-paced a river, but now it's, like, right at the bank level, and it's beginning to spill into the floodplain on either side. Sure. Um, I mean, if we've turned up empty and we've got to the river and feasibly the only real way she could get across would be the bridge, we're kind of a bit stuck unless we start going off really extreme, like south, west. Hmm. I mean, our people maybe know the other side of the river at least decently so maybe we can go you people maybe your side can stay like make sure this side our side of the river is covered and we can just do a little bit of um a little bit of scouting to see if there's anything turns up at least a cursory um investigation of the other side in case yeah uh so I guess we'll do that then. We'll head over the bridge and do our own scouting. Me and Adam. Okay. Um, so 
for that, uh, that's more of a survival track roll as you now kind of begin your own personal searches. As you cross over this bridge, it's a it's an old stone bridge, probably made from the same stone as the castle that you've lived in most of your lives. And you can see kind of down the river pushing out towards the sea, there are a number of kind of small barges and rafts. Along the bank, a fisherman is kind of doing what he can to catch. You don't rely on the river trade as part of your house, but the river trade does run through here on its way down the Blackwater Rush towards the bay. Uh, so if you'd like to make survival track rolls, that would be kind of your personal search. If you want to do more of a conversational search, kind of talking with anyone that you see, uh, you could do a... Um, I guess like a persuasion convinced to tell me what you know. All right. I think I'm going to do the survival just because we were used to finding like any tracks or. I'm better at persuasion. I'm I just try yeah. to. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. So Adeline, the ground is very muddy the other side and you can see the damp trodden farmers fields that have just been swept away by storm water there's no sign of ripped dress there are lots of muddy footprints it's nearly impossible for you to tell who's gone where the other side of this bridge although you push on for as far as your will will let you and Jamie you call out to a number of people on your way and they can't tell you they've seen the Lady Tala, uh, but you get the feeling from one fisherman that he's very wary of you. He kind of keeps his distance from you in a very physical way, and he's packing up his, his kind of simple rod to kind of go about his business. That tracks. <laughs> sure. Um, I mean, I think if we're not getting anything at this point, it's unfortunate, but we head back. Yeah. Oh, back at least. Why don't you head back? I'll look for a little while longer. I'll be back by sunfall. Just want to give it one last go. Um, and so, Jamie, you make your way back towards the hold, passing through the tiny hamlet. It's more a collection of communal buildings than it is a formal village. And you can tell that there's a scarcity in the feel of this place. The butcher who works here has very little out and seems nearly idle in his little stall. You hear the communal mill kind of working away and everyone kind of watches as you pass. And looking back and the other way, there's a feeling of an absence. There's less people here than normal. Less activity. Uh, I mean, I can ask someone why, uh, where is everyone? Good day, my lord. It's uh, a woman who had been kind of busy washing out large sheets and hanging them on the a rope kind of across in the sunlight of the day. I'm, I'm afraid few people have been uh, moving out with what's been going on. Where you were all dying up at the castle. Where there were bad omens, my lord. Well, we're not all dead. Clearly not, my lord. I'm very glad to see it.
He'll just start riding off again. <laughs> with nothing else. <laughs> Seven, watch over you, my lord. And she, and she kind of hurries about, making a great big show of hanging up her sheets. Just look busy, look like you're doing something meaningful. And we'll pan from Jamie riding up the path towards House Tremaine and fade back with the light to earlier in the day. Allegra, you pack your things in mm -hmm. your chamber and Danella kind of sits on the bed, still a little feverish, watching you. Oh, Danella, don't look at me like that. I know you don't want to leave. I know you're quite still. Don't. There's nothing we can do here anymore. Look, it's for the best. Honestly, we can do much more at King's Landing and beyond. When we get you home, we'll have a nice talk with your father. We'll send as much help as we can back. Hmm? All right. Well, is there anything you want or need before we go? And she's giving you kind of a, a sad, hopeful look. And then she kind of drops her eyes and plays with her fingers. Um, and Allegra's going to reach over and sort of stroke her cheek and say, look, hopefully Jamie and Adeline will find Tala and she'll be absolutely fine. And you can write one another. Perhaps see one another when she's back. And she reaches into kind of the folds of her dress and pulls out a small note that she's written for Tala. Um, it's kind of folded up in a, a fairly ornate way. Mm -hmm. Kind of the maximum paper has been used to fill this note, but it's a small thing and it's kind of wadded a little bit where it's been kind of over folded. I tell you, I will leave this with Asta, and he can give it to Tala when she's back, all right? She nods. All right, good girl. And Allegra's gonna like kiss the side of her head and then like shoo her on to get her stuff together. And then she's gonna throw the stuff that she's got left into her trunk or whatever and head out to find Asta. And Asta, where does Allegra find you? Probably in... Uh is still <clears throat> recovering because it's it's both things isn't it it's the uh bruised spine and the fever <laughs> so yeah, i guess all, all the business he's been attending to would be summoning people to his uh, chambers and having the conversations there so allegra like knocks and before you even got a chance to answer she's like walking in she's done that knock open sure Sorry, I'm not interrupting anything, am I, Aston? No. Do you need anything? Good. I've come to tell you I'm leaving today. Ah. Okay, so you're dead set on leaving then. Yes. There's okay. nothing I can do here. Everyone who is sick has been tended to. The dead have been tended to. I will just waste away sitting here. I'm not exactly equipped to go riding, looking for Tala. Very fair. And how's your daughter? Better? She's fine. Okay. I hope so. I'll have her seen to by physicians in King's Landing. Yes. Make sure nothing else happens. I think she's been through a lot. We all have. She certainly has. And uh, Lego's going to come over and hand you the note. Uh, this is to Tala when she returns. Okay, I'll see that. Uh, it gets it's from bit. Danella, just in case you're worried I've written something there. No, why would you think that? Mm. And like it just Look. fixes him with like a glare. <laughs> Look, I think some sort of apologies in order. We all uh, been through a lot these last couple of days, so I feel like 
some things were said with a tone that maybe is not constructive. After all, we're in this together, all of us. Mm. Just remember that. Oh, so I have if... not forgotten. Good. And uh, meanwhile, since you're going to King's Landing, I did have a thought about what you said, and um, perhaps there's no harm in having a look around. And she 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 plays like mock shock. My little brother listening to advice from his big sister. Don't get your hopes up. Just set a little look around. Oh. And what are you in the market for, in particular? Someone that would get us connections. Someone preferably higher up. With good resources, contacts. Blonde, brunette, silver hair. Does it really matter? Mm -mm. I suppose not. Yeah, that's what I thought. Well, while I'm there, I'll shop around, as it were. I'll send okay. word if anything comes up. Perfect. Thank you. And Allegra's going to lean over and give him a little hug and kiss the side of his uh, his face. I'm sorry, Asta. It's okay. Let's just make sure that we uh, want the same thing, yes? Mm-hmm. Good. You're doing a marvelous job. <laughs> I mean, lying is not necessary. I'm doing an okay job. <laughs> <laughs> Allegra looks as if she's going to say something. She very pointedly just... Tell Jenny that I'll be staying in our usual place and that he's to meet me when he's ready. But tell him not okay. to take too long, as I will be taking a ship shortly for Belsea Castle. Well, if he doesn't take too long, it's a good sign. It means that they found Tarla. Hopefully. Good. Safe travels. You too. And don't trust the maester. I do not intend on doing such a thing. Don't worry. Good. All right. Well, you rest. And she, like, passes a little hand. <laughs> oh, Allegra? Mm -hmm. Yes? Red hair. Red? Okay. And she kind of side-eyes him, quirks an eyebrow, and walks out. And about an hour or so later, Allegra, you are fully prepared to leave for the ride to King's Landing. And it is on your way out that you cross paths with a man in a wine red cloak who has just dismounted from a horse. And you can hear the clink of a great chain around his neck. And Matt. Maester Otto has arrived at Famine's Hold and you see the Lady Allegra Dorsey coming out, servants carrying simple travelling things. Good day, my lady. Taking leave of this place, are we? Maester, I'm simply returning home for a short visit. Mm. Very short visit indeed, especially in these ghastly circumstances. Well, they're less than ideal, yes. Well, we'll set things to rights, I'm sure. You are well, we? I take it. That's an interesting choice of words. Who is this we? In times of, in times of need, the Seven preach that we are to help our neighbors acts of charity mm. are smiled upon. And so House Gaunt arrives to aid its fellows, the Tremains. Mm. And he waves over and there's a, like a, basically about a half dozen guards riding in as well with uh, supplies and 
such. I assume these guards won't be staying. Otherwise, that's quite suspicious, would you agree? Well, with your own forces depleted and somewhat of my stature here, it is only natural that House God would want to safeguard its investments. Oh, yes. Just saying as an optics sort of thing, you know, from one businesswoman to another that uh, looks less than ideal. The famed gaunts riding in into the Tremaine household with a cadre of guards. Oh, it's it's quite good optics. See, we're valiantly mm. coming in to save you from yourselves, mm. as we so often. Oh, from ourselves, I see, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Couldn't possibly right. have been an external cause for this affliction. Well, there could be many causes for this, living in such a dreary, mildewy, ghastly has many effects upon one's supplies and mind. I honestly wouldn't know. Are you speaking from experience? Unfortunately, yes. We learn many things in the Citadel, how such oh. things can affect people. What a dreary existence. Not as dreary as living here, I expect. Hmm. Well, Maester, I do so hope that you enjoy your stay. Tragically, Oops. I won't be around to become closer acquaintance. A true tragedy, my lady, for we are lesser for not having you here with us. Mm -hmm. I am quite so sure. Now, if you excuse me, I'd like to go to the road. And of course, my lady and I... Some of this time. Do not let the gate hit you on the way out, Lady Allegra. Mm. And she just fixes him this a huge smile. Good day, Maester. Take care. Of course, my lady, you as well. May the seven light your path. Hmm. And she just Yeah, and chin up. He just lets her go. <sighs> Get to work. And he'll make his way towards the uh, the key. And as you reach the the main door to the large foyer, you are, of course, announced audibly by one of the House Tremaine. Um, and Asta, you'll be able to kind of hear this call, and you'll also hear coming running to fetch you another servant. Good. Um, I probably would tell this person to instruct the maester to get um, accommodated in the old maester's chambers and once he's uh, fit and happy to come and meet then um, come directly to my chambers and I would make sure that at least three of our own guards are present in my chambers yes my lord and the servant kind of goes and maester Otto you're greeted by kind of a, a squire-esque servant of House Tremaine who informs you there to take you to the Maester's Chambers. Excellent. I'll need to get set up in there, um, have somebody bring my supplies from the horse, uh, and begin looking and seeing how old Horace has left things. As you pass through the castle, it's easy to see the well-worn tapestries that adorn the walls, which seem damp and in some places eroded. The castle is of a strange arrangement, which reminds you of a, a rabbit warren. Things don't quite connect up as you'd expect, and it's a slightly disorientating trip through the castle until you arrive in this small room at the back of the castle, which opens out onto a courtyard with a well. The maester's chambers is made up of two rooms. The actual chambers itself is an inner room, and then this outer room where people are being uh, attended to for their sickness. You can see 
a desk mm-hmm. in this room with a number of open kind of bottles and there's a woman who is tending the fire and on the table is the corpse of a corpse owl which has been left exactly where Jamie dumped it untouched why is that thing in here ain't fit for me to move it he'll just gesture to one of one of the guards get that out of here get it out into the woods I don't care where and you see the guard from House Tremaine look towards the, the woods witch who in their opinion is the closest thing to a representative of their house here and she kind of just gives a shrug and they kind of take the owl by like a talon warily and kind of drag it out a few feathers kind of falling away from the bird when did that how can i make well it was uh the young lord sir it ain't my place to question what the young lord does they think bringing a carrion eater in here was going to make things better Ain't my place to imagine what the lords think, sir. No, I don't imagine. This is your handiwork. He starts examining some of the uh, the people who are recovering. I've been doing my best. Keep their fevers down. Keep their wits about them. Making do with what you have. It's not bad work. It may be a capable assistant. Thank you, sir. Of course. Do we have an idea what kind of poison it is? Do you have a name for it, anyway? I don't know, sir. All I know is they seem to have been touched by the stranger, and I don't intend to get touched either. No. No, we shouldn't, if we can help it. Has anybody else gotten sick since the start of this? Not that I've been told. Alright then. Carry on, I'll be by later to work on a few things. I must meet with the Lord. You should probably warn her to be careful with that owl. How so? Well, it's an ill omen to kill him, but I'm sure it's uh, not going to put you too kindly in the stranger's books if you mistreat one of his servants. (sighs) Even after death, sir. The stranger takes care of his own, as long as we give it a proper burial. I suppose he can't be too madder at us than he is already. Indeed, just be careful of shaking the souls loose, sir. When souls come, when souls go, little concern of mine, my concern is keeping the souls of the here and now, here and now. It's a good goal, I'll leave you, sir. I'll leave the others to the septums. Where is the sept here? The men will want to pray at some point. House Tremaine, don't keep her shrine to the seven, sir. And suddenly, with every new sentence, so much more is explained about this place to me. There's an offering table in one of the rooms, I think. Excellent. I'll ask after it in a bit. As I said, I do have a meeting that I must attend. Be improper. Near the kitchens, sir. Very good. Thank you. Um, your name? Mallory, sir. Thank you, Mallory. I appreciate your your courtesies to me. 
kosher meister. Yes, some might forget that while I'm here. I'd be curious to ask you about your chain another time. If we have the time, I might be so inclined to tell you tales. As you like, sir. Of course. And Do you your... need directions to Lord Astor's chambers? If that is where I'm to meet him, he is not well enough to be in the hall. Lord Astor's doing quite well in his recovery, sir. Well then, if we're to meet him, if I'm to meet him in his chambers, directions there would be appreciated. And she kind of looks you kind of over and seems to decide that she's in fact going to just leave you there. Mm. Follow me then, sir. All right. And he'll trail after her, taking in the place, trying to get a feel for it as unruly as it is. Okay, so I'd like you to make an awareness notice check as you pass through the castle. Absolutely. Oh, awareness, awareness, awareness. Uh, that is an 11. Uh, on an 11, you kind of garner more questions and answers as you pass through the castle and on how it's kind of formed. At one point, you kind of see a break in the wall, and it's... Why would that be there? It seems to lead to a corridor that just dead ends for no reason. Uh, but she takes you up a flight of stairs and along a, a better cared for corridor. You imagine this is a place that's used more frequently by the core of the house. Um, and along to the Lord's chambers. She knocks on the door and steps out of the way, allowing the servant to announce you. So, Charlie, before we begin, <laughs> uh, in the uh, letters we've received, there was there a uh, mention of the maester's name, uh, or was just a maester will be coming? Uh, you would know that the, the gaunt maester is called Maester Otto. He has okay. been their maester for a long time, um, and considering your relationship with the gaunts, even though it's antagonistic, you know your enemies pretty well. Okay, cool. Uh, in that case, would you allow for some kind of memory test to see if there's any angle or knowledge I have prior that I could exploit in conversation or something like that? Uh, what sort of details are you trying to recall? Um, any stories that I might have heard about the Maester, any vices, for example, any um, things that might have been swept under the rug, um, things I could leverage on. <laughs> okay, so I think this would actually be kind of more of a, a knowledge okay. streetwise, I'm going to call this, for a kind of a rumor check. Okay. Um, it's not very good. <laughs> <laughs> I think I cannot. Nope, nope, not this. Wait. No worries. That's the same thing, isn't it? Because <laughs> it was the okay. max. Uh, <laughs> um, on a six, Matt, I would like you to describe a rumor that Asta has heard. It's up to you whether it is the truth or a lie. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, he has heard uh, that Maester Otto uh, has a habit of dissecting animals while they are still alive. Yikes. <laughs> um, cool. In that case, um, Aster will signal the guards that are now inside his cham chambers to let the mason in. Come in. Lord Aster... Thank you so much for inviting us into your humble abode. Maester Otto, um, thank you very much for coming on such short notice. Have you had some time to look at the uh, 
people recovering already? A little bit, yes. They are currently being tended to. Uh, your woodswoman, Mallory, appears to be doing an admirable job, given the circumstances and her training. Yes, of course. Um, as you might, might have guessed, uh, we were in a hurry with the problem that <clears throat> also afflicted our previous maester, as you might have heard. He wasn't able to help very much. But he did Most have some theory, theories that he shared with me before he passed. So perhaps um, we could start with you asking me what you need to know in order to make sure we understand what happened here. Absolutely. There will be only so much we can do, of course. It has been time, and things around the hold have been moved, so I will not be able to be as thorough as I normally would like. However, first of all, when did this start? This happened the night of the hunt, that I am sure you know when it took place. The feast we think we gathered had some kind of poison, although it is not confirmed yet. At least the previous maester, he thought that whatever was causing this disease was in the blood and ingested through the food and the drink. Mm -hmm. That would make sense. Have you eaten anything from the hold since then? I remember, Charlie, I remember we were having conversations yes. about bringing in new food, right? So, so yeah, no Adeline and yeah. Jamie had the old food basically destroyed. Uh, yeah. It was tested on the pigs, um, mm -hmm. and then fresh food was ordered in by Jamie. He sent the cadre out to go and get it for him. Gotcha, gotcha. No, as soon as we, we identified that that might have been the problem, we... Uh, we fed it to some pigs to confirm the theory, and unfortunately, they too died. So all food was discarded. Um, I believe there was a barrel of wine that was kept, but no one drank from it ever since. Apart from that, all new food. And nobody has gotten sick since then? Correct. Yeah, excellent. That does confirm what I was told prior. That means that it possibly was the food, possibly was poison, though, if you'll forgive me for being so forward, given the state I've seen your hold in, have you thought of possibly some spoilage? Something going bad, potentially? Mr. I Otto, I appreciate your concerns and any position that you might think you hold under these, this roof because of your knowledge. But I would like to remind you, you're still under my roof. And although these questions are necessary, I would take care of it with your toe. As for spoilage, no. All the food prepared was from the hunt of that day. And the wine as well was freshly prepared. The wine was not, but as I said, the one barrel that wasn't up to standard was kept. So if you wish to conduct any experiments, you could. I may do so in time, after we've finished our discussions. I thank you for preserving that. That is indeed very important in this situation, depending on what has occurred, potentially. But it's not just what has occurred, it's what will occur based on this. At this, there's a knock on the door, and Sir Lucan of the King's Guard is announced. Sir Lucan. Lucan. Good morning. I am Good to morning. make my way back to King's Landing, escorting the Silent Sisters and the unfortunate. Lord Bywater and his men. Very well. Um, Maester, if you don't mind, if you could go 
and uh, start setting up and see if the sick need your help. I will call on you if you have any further questions. Uh, feel free to send word my way as well. Certainly, my lord. Thank you very much. We'll be in. Heard it from you soon. And obviously, I wouldn't want you to feel unprotected here with all that happened as well. So I've assigned, kind of pointed two of the three guards that I brought in. I've assigned these two men to make sure you are protected at all times. Oh, I appreciate that, my lord. Lord Nestor has also seen fit to uh, provide me with an honor guard to ensure oh. conduct is proper for all of us here. Lovely. In that case, you will be really protected, more the merrier. Indeed, yes. Thank you, my lord. Let's hope it is and not needed. No, certainly not. Not in the wake of this tragedy should we need such things. May the Seven be with you. Seven lights your way as well, Master. And he'll back out. Maester. Salute. Thank you. Um, at this point, Aster turns towards the remaining guard and say, If you don't mind, uh, you can uh, take watch outside at the moment. And they follow your instruction. Good. So, um, here we are again. You are departing, yes? Thank you for carrying our uncle, by the way. I know it wasn't your original um, instruction. No, and in that regard, cousin, it would be my advice to you to see that the Lord Larian returns to King's Landing soon. Yeah. Um, actually, I shall have a word with him. Soon. Uh, last I've heard, he was still not feeling at 100%. He's probably not in danger anymore, but I think it needs to be up to him to make a decision. But I shall chat to him and send him on his way as soon as possible. Not in danger from sickness, it perhaps, my lord. Correct. That is indeed what worries me. I do not want to attempt to put words into his grace's mouth, but I think it is what concerns his grace as well. Or would concern his grace if he knew his cousin were still alive. Hmm. I understand. But I also fear that given his circumstance and uh, what transpired in King's Landing, perhaps all things accounted for, poison and all, he might be safer here. I am not sure. As I said, it will be up to him to decide. I'm not sure what to tell you, Asta, but I have my concerns. My duty is to protect the king and his kingdoms, and his family. And I am uncertain the role of Lord Valarian in all of this, but he is noted. And I wonder if it is he who puts you in danger, not the other way around. I say this, of course, in confidence, as your friend, my lord. Hmm. I understand. It is actually an angle I had not considered yet, and for that I thank you. I shall think on it. You might be onto something. Stay safe but and keep your hands high, Asta. Always. Just like you thought, taught me. 
Though you still favor the sword, I am told. Yes, I do, although... I'm afraid I don't master it as much as a... Gonna make an over-elaborate uh, hand gesture. A member of the King's Guard, but... I have my way with it. Well, if you consider it a game, then it shall be a game, Aster. <laughs> consider it perhaps life and death. You may be better prepared for what is to come. Maybe. Let's hope it's just our last resort. Steel, that is. I, will, I was always better with words anyway. People do like to keep busy in peacetime. <laughs> they do. I'll take my leave, my lord. Do that, and thank you again, Lucan. Safe travels, and if you feel like anything we discussed here, anything else that's new that might help us in understanding what's happening comes to light, please, I uh, beg of you, let me know. I'll send what word I can. I know you will. Thank you. And he holds out his hand to you. Yeah. Clasp his arm. And gives a shake. Um, Matt, a quick question. Is Maester Otto listening outside or have you returned to your chambers? <laughs> no. Or I have you gone somewhere wine. else? <laughs> I have a cask of wine. I need to investigate for right now. It would be rude to listen at the door. The Lord will summon me when he needs me. If he does not want to talk with me, that is his his prerogative. It is his hold. Be rude. <laughs> and Asta, with your cousin departed to escort uh, your dead uncle and the others from the hold with the Silent Sisters, uh, is there anything you would like to be up to? Yes, actually. Um, at this point, um, I think not necessarily in this order, but between these uh, days, I guess, yeah, depends on when they left for the hunt. Uh, probably would be in this order of events. He would try and summon someone that would be a servant that would be close to Tarla and hopefully knew more of her dealings than, although it's hard, than Aster, but perhaps, mm -hmm. maybe. Um, I, Tala would have had at least one handmaid, if not more than one, so that would probably be your closest to Tala servants, mm -hmm. her lady's maids. Probably would, would summon at least a pair, so it's not as intimidating. Okay. So, no, Millie! That's not what I'm trying to do. Have a think for me and tell me the names of your two maids that come uh, to answer the Lord's summon. Um, and while Millie is doing that for me, uh, Adeline, you are continuing the search and I'd like you to make another roll. Um, if you were using the men that are still out searching, then it's a warfare command. And if you are doing your personal investigation, it's another survival track. <sighs> Yeah, I'll, unless I'll... you have another action you'd like to take while you're out. No, no, I think she's going to take a few of her men and just have them just... At this point, it's getting desperate, so she's going to just have them just call up for Tarla mm -hmm. as well. Like, we're not being quiet about it. We're being... Well, it's desperate because this is as far as what we haven't seen yet, and if we don't, we're probably never going to find her again. All right, so that's... And oh, 15. Okay, so on a 15, you continue the search and it's another couple of hours, but you pass by a someone who seems to be kind of sleeping rough in the woods, a woodsman perhaps, that's how he always kind of exists. And he tells you that the night of the storm, there were people camping in the woods. And when he leads you up to that location, it's the location that you and Jamie had found that night with that burnt out fire. Mm -hmm. Well, 
What did they look like, and what were they here for? Did you guess? Was a woman and two men. It's a pretty sheltered spot. I imagine they were keeping out of it as best they could. What did they look like? Woman was tall, and two men were pretty much like any men, dirty. Do you know what direction they went? I'd say they went that way. He kind of gives a cursory look around and he points and he's pointing um, west. All right. I go with my man and just say that these could be nobody, but these could be poachers. Smugglers, just be on the ready. If they Maybe are Harley poachers and there's a reward, he kind of makes a gesture to suggest if you bribe him, he might have more information. At this point, we're having an investigation on Tremaine land. This is a Tremaine issue. If you wish to remain on this land, you will tell us what you know. Okay, no I'd like bribe. you to... Sorry, go ahead. Oh yeah, that's it. Just no okay. bribe. Um, so I'd like you to make a persuasion intimidation check. Hell yeah. This is going to be relatively easy, uh, given your stasis here. Oof, 12. Oof, yes. Uh, he kind of looks at you and looks at the men around and decides it's not worth the bother of getting beaten over. I heard that uh, one of them boats went missing during the storm. Maybe they pushed a little more that way. Any points? It's still west, but it's more towards the river. It's more on an angle. And I know they aren't here anymore. But I, I didn't see them go, so I don't know if they've got your lady with them. But I hadn't seen them here before. Strangers in the woods. Separate account. One of the men, he's got a nasty scar. Well, they're still here. I like to know what people are doing in our woods. As I said, my lady, I don't think they are here. I ain't seen them and I ain't seen their snares. And I'm gonna make sure that they're not here if they intend to be doing what I think they're doing here. But thank you for your information. I'll ask you a question, my lady. On the nod. You still yes. got that witch up at your hold. If you mean the woods woman, yes. I'd keep an eye on her if I were you. She knows how to say the right things, but she doesn't obey the gods. I don't give a shit about the gods right now. You're a braver soul than I am, pardon me, my lady. And he's gonna try to, like, leave your sight before anything escalates. <laughs> um, and we'll pan back I already to killed! Ask... <laughs> I already killed the <laughs> corpse out. What else? Let's just let's go. <laughs> let's go! Let's kill everyone! No witnesses! <laughs> I mean, like, the gods. It's like, well, you know, I killed the corpse out, you know what? Whatever, the gods can do whatever they want. <laughs> Adeline tilts her head back at the sky. Bring it! Um, panning back to Asta, before you stands uh, two of the handmaids from the house. One of them is a little older than the other. She was probably Allegra's handmaid before she was Tala's. 
Um, and their names are Ellen and Darla. Which has caused much confusion in the household when Tala was being called and Dala appeared and vice versa. <laughs> sure. Um, so I would tell the guards to let them in. <clears throat> um, hello. Thank you very much for meeting. Uh, this conversation is probably not going to be very pleasant the topic i mean but we need to figure out what happened and i believe that maybe you might have some information this is regarding my lady sister darla darla looks openly relieved when you say this is about tala <laughs> um and ellen's slightly more reserved she's the older of the two You see, on the night of the incident, I remember th some things somewhat hazily. I am sure I saw Tarla with someone else, a person I had never seen before, a young girl. Does this ring any bell? Darla looks towards Ellen. Uh, who and Ellen is more kind of keeping her eyes at that downwards, not looking at you, looking at you kind of angle. And Dala kind of turns back. I I didn't see her with anyone except for the the Lord's will. And you, of course, my Lord. And what about you? Can I look? To Ellen. I did see Tala with the Lady Danella, my lord. That is naturally not who I'm referring to. Hmm. It seems we might have hit a dead end. But there is that strange woman that... down in the Maester's chambers, my lord. Darla, yes, to yes, be yes, no. Yes, 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 no, no, Darla, no, not, not a, not a woman, a, a young girl. A girl. I want uh... you to understand that. <gasps> oh, maybe it was Nancy's girl. She's been bringing her up to the castle, teaching her how to cook. Nancy's girl. How old is Nancy's girl? I don't know, about seven or eight, I'd say. Okay, no, never mind. Hmm. Is that too old or too young, my lord? Too young, too young, too young. All right. Now, shush, let me think. Sorry, my lord. Okay. Hmm. Seems like, um, you don't have more knowledge than I already do. Can I look at them for a while intently? My lord, if... if I may, I didn't see her with anyone but the Lady Danella, but there is something missing from her room. Her hairbrush, my lord. The hmm. silver one you gave her on her last name's day. Are you sure about this? Of course, my lord. It's my job to make sure that the Lady Tremaine's things are where they should be. Couldn't it just be misplaced in the confusion of the events? Yeah, maybe, maybe Lady Dorsey borrowed it. She has lovely hair, my lord. Okay, Darla, uh, thank you. Go wait outside. I'll speak to Ellen now. Of course, my lord. And she kind of scurries out and you see her kind of half glance over her shoulder. And she gets to the door, and you can tell she is going to lurk the fuck outside this door. <laughs> she has, like, just no subtlety about her. <laughs> That's alright. Hmm. And when did you notice it was missing? Yesterday, my lord. 
when the Lady Adeline was telling us about the hunt today, I went into the Lady Tala's room to make sure it was prepared and ready. And I noticed it was missing from her vanity. I don't know what they call it, Westeros, but that's what I'm calling it. <laughs> Fair. And from her table. Hmm. And when was the last time you saw it in place? Before the feast, my lord. Before the I was feast. brushing the lady's hair. Hmm. Does Asa remember? seeing this brush anywhere on Tarla's person or in the events of the night um, that I could have known that was there or not really. You can make a memory cunning test if you'd like. Okay. Desperately try and recall if you've seen this silver. A key brush. word being desperate. <laughs> okay. That is a 90. Okay. So you rack your memory of that night and you remember the two Talas and you remember a dark space and there was barely any light in here save for the slither that was coming you think from the castle, it must have been from the castle and you remember something glittering something silver, but as you try and focus on that you can just remember that sword that was coming for you that whole time, the Baratheon sword. And you try and focus back and you remember a conversation around you. Again, you're trying to hold on to the memory as tight as you can. And again, silver, but you, you're not sure it was a, a hairbrush. It was something, it seems something smaller. And am I right in assuming that she doesn't typically carry this brush around, correct? I think it is one of her most precious belongings, Lord Asta. It was a gift from yourself. That does not answer my question, though. Would she take it with her, or would she leave it in her room? She did take it with her to King's Landing, my lord, but most of the time, yes, it would be in her room. Doesn't make any sense. Why would you take the brush? My lord, the lady was... And she stops and she kind of looks to you for permission to carry on. Carry on. The lady was... Unhappy. She was afraid of her marriage. And I can't help but wonder if she ran away. And if she did, it would not be uncommon for a girl, I, I mean, a woman, to take something of value that she could sell. Or, you know, something precious that she might remember her life by. I hope she has not come apart, my lord. Master's eyes probably glint with a shimmer of uh, remembrance of the conversation that he had with Tarla while almost dying uh, about she running away and just leaving if she wanted to. But it doesn't show outside and kind of goes. I'm sure the lady would never consider um, leaving her duties as part of this family. Thank you for your help. I think you are free to leave. I'll have the maid search the castle for it, my lord, just in case it is somewhere else. Yes, please do that. And she kind of curtsies and doesn't need to be excused. She just goes yep. obediently. And you hear a brief spurt of conversation at the door as Dala appears to... What did he want? Did you tell him about the... Did you tell him it wasn't me? And they kind of hurry away and out of earshot. Maester, you check the barrel of wine and you can see it has been smashed um, within an inch of its carrying capacity, essentially. It's 
Man most of its contents kind of leaked out and it's been moved to an outside courtyard beside the kitchen. I don't know what I expected. And he'll start essentially pulling uh, little like vials essentially out of his pouches to try and gather some of it. Okay. Um, I don't think you need a test for that. It's easy for you to kind of bend into the barrel and scoop mm -hmm. some out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so he'll gather that up and take it back to the uh, to the maester's chambers and essentially start subjecting it to a small battery of tests for some of the more uh, the better known and more common poisons that you might encounter in uh, Westeros. Okay. Um, so I'm going to say this is a knowledge research test as you kind of mm -hmm. do what you can to see if you can affect chemical changes and similar mm -hmm. and to line it up with your information on what happened here at the hold. All right. Uh, that is a 14. Okay. You quickly are able to remove um, a number of poisons that you're familiar with. The symptoms didn't match. The reaction isn't what you'd expect. Uh, it's hard, f you know that it's hard for you to tell because the, uh, the wine itself smells particularly stale and, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's kind of been corrupted by the elements to a degree. Mm -hmm. uh, and as you kind of make your, your final test, you do suspect that something was added to this wine. Something about its composition is reacting in a way that just normal wine wouldn't I'm imagining mm -hmm. you have a sample of regular, you know, uncontaminated wine for comparison. Yeah. Yes, of course. But, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, give the Tremaines a stag. Apparently they were poisoned. Um, and but only a stag, I'm... not a dragon. Please. There's... The odds are just that little bit. <laughs> just enough. They should be lucky they aren't giving only a groat for it. And so hit men, he starts running through his mind. Okay, so poison happened. Cool. Who's doing the poisoning and why? Who was here? There were a lot of people here. We know this. Who's got reason to try and shoot for this? Well, take your pick. And no, we wouldn't do that, because it's way too broad. Not enough targeting to be our measure. Besides, there are more fun ways to do this. As a thorough person, I imagine you put House Gorn on the list regardless and cross them off as you work through the logic of eliminating suspects. Absolutely. Just for the thought exercise of it, just to be sure. Because, as I said, it's too broad. Too broad a spectrum. We'd be more clinical if we wanted to hurt the Tremaines. Who would want to hurt the Crown? Who would dare go against the Crown? Is this a Blackfire poisoning? Blackfire's just made a big showing at the tournament. Maybe they want to make a hit. Valerian's horse was seen last in the company of an Aaron corpse. Did he give the horse? Was it stolen? Is somebody trying to cover their tracks with this? The Wills were here. The Wills have bad blood with the Baratheons. Who also have bad blood with the Tremaines. Did they try to kill two birds with one stone? Doesn't feel like Baratheon style, but who knows? Maybe somebody uh, somebody got it into their head to try and do something a little different. And just all of these possibilities shifting mm -hmm. and playing and coursing through his mind as he's trying to settle on who's the prospect. And he might just play through three or four different scenarios so that when he goes to Aster to let him know what's going on, he can 
present these as possibilities so that way he has something to go off of for what and, his actions mm -hmm. no, oh, and being kind of methodical and logical this is taking you some time um, mm -hmm. and I would like to leave Maester making his list and checking it twice and mm -hmm. cutting across to Allegra as you and Danella make your way down the road towards King's Landing it begins as kind of a, a bridal path that extends then into the wider, more mercantile road. And it runs kind of adjacent to the river. Once you're past the castle, you can see the river always on that side of you. And you push through the country and it is, it's not hard going for you as a confident rider and cinder, but Danella struggles in places, coaxing her horse to cross a puddle and pushing around and as you pass small homesteads and farms, some of them seem to lay abandoned, the fields wasted, crops sodden and bent. And you push up that hill that you had crested the night that you'd followed Valor, though at a slightly different point. And you look again down towards the river and out across towards the further crown lands and to the west, the westerlands and then back to the road in front of you as you ride what does Allegra think? As she's riding she's thinking about everything that's happened these past few days she's particularly thinking about that night she chased R'hllor and that fire in the horse's eyes it seemed just glare at her before it, it charged um, and she's thinking about that stranger, that presence that's just always walking towards her and she's constantly, I think as she's riding especially past this this part of the countryside where she saw him she's like looking for him just to see if he's following her again and then she thinks to that night where her room was on fire and then she went back and it wasn't again and seeing her mother with the baby in her arms and just seeing everything that's all the strange things that have been happening and i think I like a cold like shudder mm -hmm. runs down her back i'd like you to make an awareness notice test as you kind of drift through your memories and take in the landscape okay all right this is just 46 that's a 15. Okay. You notice, just in time, that the land is beginning to slip on the steeper side of this hill, and you manage to rein in your horse, Cinder, before she too slips down and away. Danella uh, is not so lucky as her horse's hooves kind of slide as the land slips down and she grips tight to the reins in her saddle and the horse is sliding and begins to kind of lose its bearing as its legs tip and she is thrown down and off and into the mud okay so she's fine the horse is done but she's fine the horse oh, is fallen the yeah <laughs> the horse is... okay so um Allegra is going to hop off uh, Cinder real quick, pick Danella up, and see what she can do about this horse that just slipped, see if it's injured. Okay, so I'd like you to make an animal handling check. Um, if you have any healing bonus dice, I would allow those to apply. No. Okay. Uh, okay, so... Uh, I've only got ride or train as bonuses. Um, we could. We'll, I would, we'll I would argue train. that with train, I would have yeah. some knowledge of horse anatomy and. We'll take a train. The, the whole thing. Okay, all right. So on second. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, 16. Damn, Allegra. All right, so the horse um, seems to have been spooked by its experience, but you get it back up, um, and mm -hmm. there's no sign of it um, having injured its legs. Good, in good. any way, but it 
seems to be jittery. Mm -hmm. His eyes are kind of a little wide. Okay, so Allegra is gonna just take a little time to just just soothe soothe the pony, just to try and get it to chill out a bit, um, and then turn her attentions to Danella and sort of like pick her up and make sure she's okay. Danella is muddy and shaken by the experience, much like her horse. Mm -hmm. um, but she kind of shrugs to say, "I'm I'm okay," and kind of wipes the mud away. She's still a little pallid, a little sick. Mm -hmm. um, and you have a feeling that had she been probably in full health, she wouldn't have fallen off and it would have been all right. But kind of looking back at this hill, you can just see like this great clod of earth that has shifted and pulled away. So has that completely wiped out the road? Uh, it's just made the terrain a little bit more difficult and you would be more wary pushing down this steep side. Mm -hmm. But it's still traversable from what I can gather. Okay, so uh, Allegra's gonna just do the mum thumb, just get a bit of dirt off Danella's face. And then she's gonna put her up on Cinder, because she knows that Cinder is a well trained and very mm -hmm. sort of steady mount. Um, and gonna chuck Danella on her horse, and she's gonna move to this this new mount. Because, you no, know, Allegra, she's a more confident rider than Danella. She's had an experience around horses, so. And for the briefest of moments, as you climb up onto the mount, you see that glint of fire in this horse's eyes. Mm -hmm. But it's a brief moment. And Tala, you can feel fire warm against your face. You feel a hand touch your forehead. It's cold compared to that warm fire. You can hear the birds singing around you, the crunch of leaf litter. You're in a quiet outdoors place. But then you hear the sound of water running, of tumbling, of drips. And you remember a dark tunnel a dark tunnel where your brother lay. He was so still, so pale. He wanted your brother to live. And you remember laughing, the laughing that echoed in the walls of the tunnel. No, it was in a bigger room. And you remember the feast. There was a feast. And none of the goblets matched. And your sister... You think she was your sister, paced between the tables, pouring wine, and the sound of the running water begins again. The rushing of a river. You remember being very cold. You remember the rain. So much water tumbling from the sky. Spilt wine. Someone spilt wine on their dress. And then this place. You don't know this place. The trees, they're wrong. And you're awake. And looking over you is a man with a scar on his face. I'd immediately back up as much as I could preferably with my back against a tree or something. Right, lass, easy. Good to see you come to at last. He kind of straightens up and kind of pulls up his belt and down his overshirt. Who? Where am I? <laughs> well... Taking you down the river like you asked. We're up the river, I guess. <laughs> depends on how you look at it. Funny thing about the world comes and it goes, depending on which way you look at it. Can I remember this man at all? You reach through your mind for men and 
You remember a man struggling with herbs at a table. You remember that pallid, sad form. And then a smile comes to your face as you recall a handsome man. A good man. Still, you know what they say? Make good fortunes forever and all that. You made it out and you're alive. Someone's looking out for you. I instantly look around to see if my friend is here. As you take in more of this area, it seems to be um, kind of a collection of like tents. There's three or four of them around. There's a number of people kind of toing and froing. A couple of them taking interest in you as you've stirred, but mostly minding their own business. I think that puts me on edge more. It's like waking up in a dream where everybody's pretending everything's fine and you know it's not, but you're not quite sure why. And I don't know what to do because this guy is right in front of me, right? Yeah, he's kind of backed up like a little bit. There's probably, you know, five-ish feet between you as you've pulled away and he's kind of straightened up and... No need to be alarmed. We haven't hurt you. Who's... We... We who? Well, me and Bill the Boatman. And he kind of thumbs over, and you can see down by the the fire is a squat man who is actually mending some nets. Of course, when he's on land, we just call him Bill. Of course. <laughs> I. I'm sorry. I'm. I must be tired or ill or something. I don't remember. You were very ill. And I'm... I'm not now. I feel ill. Well, you're awake. It's a good sign. Is it? Still a little bit feverish, I'm guessing. I'll back up again, just in case he comes to touch my face or anything. Yeah, you kind of see him like half think about it and then you back up and he kind of... Well, if you think you can keep it down, there's some stew left over from last night. And he kind of nods and it's the same direction as Bill by the fire. For a second, that makes me want to go there. And then the thought of food hits me and makes me kind of heave a little bit. I... All right then. Thank you. Well, I got the traps to check, seeing as you're all right. All right. Am I... Am I supposed to be doing something? Just living's probably a good start. But, of course, if you've got plans, don't let me hold you back. <laughs> or if you want to be helpful, uh, I'm sure one of the girls can find something for you to do. All right then, thank you. And he kind of gives you like a weird look, almost as if he hadn't expected you to wake up and now he's not sure what to do now that you have. <laughs> I'll wait for him to get a little further away and then kind of scramble turn to stand mm -hmm. up so I don't have my back to anybody for too long and slowly edge my way towards these girls that he's pointed at, but I'm pinching myself along the way. This doesn't feel real. And you keep pinching, and your pinch kind of intensifies, and it just keeps hurting more and more, and annoyingly, you don't wake up in your bed. Mm. Okay. Um, the gentleman, I, I don't remember his name, um, he said that you needed help? They look at you and then look between them and a, a scruffy, scrawny chicken's kind of thrown at you, already mm. dead. Pluck it. 
Um, all right. Is, is anybody else plucking a chicken? I'm assuming it's a chicken. Um, I don't want to do it wrong. <laughs> and I don't want to show that I don't I know how to do this. Look, you can see in her lap is a half-plucked bird. Okay, I'm going to copy The her. feathers have been kind of neatly gathered into a wooden uh, bucket. Okay. Um, I'll sit down slightly across from that person and be kind of staring a little weirdly to to try and copy exactly what she's doing because I'm terrified of making a fool of myself. You never plucked a chicken before. Um, I tried with a grouse once. Well, same thing. It was a long time ago and I wasn't very good at it. <clears throat> uh... Well, that's all we got for you right now. All right. It's already dead. You can't do anything more to it. Just try not to pull any of the meat off or anything. All right. <laughs> I'll be very gently pulling out every single individual feather because that sounds horrific. And you kind of begin pulling and you realize it's going to take more force. And then you kind of stab yourself on one of the feather pins. Mm. And it's uncomfortable work. And the whole time that chicken's head is just kind of lolling and it's mm. kind of looking at you with these cloudy eyes. I'm going to put the edge of my, um, like the top part of my skirt over the chicken's face so I can't see it. One of the like, girls sat next to the one that had been talking to you kind of laughs, but doesn't comment. I, are you all riding on the, um, the river, is it? No, we don't work with Bill. He comes oh, and brings bad. us things. Did I not be... Bill keeps to the river and we're a bit more inland. Oh. Oh, I see. I'm sorry, I <laughs> must think I'm so silly. A little bit. <laughs> I don't really remember how I got here. I think I've been hit on the head or or... I'm not sure. None of our business. Oh. All right, sorry. And there's a uh, there's a kind of a attention at the idea of you you kind of imagine the idea of who you are, or maybe a caginess about revealing who they are to you. Mm -hmm. Uh, are wondering if perhaps they've said too much and some confusion just kind of about your presence in general. Mm -hmm. I'm, I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable. If you'd rather do this yourself, you'd probably be a lot better at it than me. More hands make light work. You'll get the hang of it. Just keep pulling. All right. Can I see any faces around this site that that makes sense to me or give me any um, sense of where I could be? Mm -hmm. So uh, I need to make an awareness notice check or a memory okay. cunning. Uh, awareness notice. Uh, okay. That's a 15. Okay, on a 15, you're glancing around. None of the faces in the camp are familiar, but 
you keep searching and you look out towards the woods the way that the man with the scar had gone and you see red brown hair there's a woman out there you think perhaps your friend and I look down at the chicken because I've been told to do something and I feel like I should complete this but mm -hmm. that's more important at the moment I'm, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I'll, I'll be back. I'll, I'll finish this. I promise. I've just got to, um, two minutes. And I'll very reverently lay the chicken down, mm -hmm. and then cut off. And they are busily working. And as your brain's kind of processing, you realize that you are surrounded by people who are very clearly lowborn. Their clothes and you know coarse fabrics and furs. For the most part and you push out into the woods towards that red brown hair and a shout goes up behind you a man calls and you see the women hop to their feet as well and there's an urgency suddenly something is happening with the group behind you and up ahead you can see your friend she's she's Moving more quickly now, she glances back towards you and you're sure it's her. And she sees you and she smiles and she begins to run. <laughs> I'm chasing. Straight after, no question. And you run. And this is an unknown landscape. You keep thinking you're going to pass something you recognize, a marker, something familiar. You've traveled all over the Tremaine lands. You know most of those woods by heart. You know down by the river. You know, the farmer's fields, the houses, and it sinks in the more you run, the more this is woods. Large woods. You see no glimpse of houses, but you can hear, pushing through behind you, the running of other people, and then the sound of horses. Horses are chasing. And up ahead, your friend, she continues to run. I'll carry on after her as quickly as I can, but I'm getting a little flashes of the hunt and you remember the hunt you remember that handsome good man was with you you remember you were going to catch the rabbit and you are back atop law chasing down that rabbit and i would like you to make an animal handling ride <laughs> as you attempt to catch the rabbit Twenty. Okay. Now you reach. Now it's the twenty. Down. <laughs> you reach down and you grab, and there's a handful of fur, and it's warm. And as you look into the rabbit's eyes, it's as if you're the rabbit. You're looking at you. There's a strange and panicked feeling, and you can feel a hand upon your shoulder. Is grabbing at your clothes and pulling at you. It's pulling you back by the hair and by the fabric of your dress. Oh, I'm going to be kicking and screaming. Okay, and I'd like you to make a, um, let's call this a fighting check. <laughs> if you have all you apply bonus test, uh, bonus dice. So, hang on a minute. I can, I can what, sorry? Uh, if you have brawl as a specialty, you can apply those dice as well. No. It's fair. <laughs> I don't know, Tala can be a brawler. <laughs> Secretly arm wrestling down in the in the little village. <laughs> okay, let's see how. Tala, the secret bruiser, could be a thing. <laughs> oh, that's a four. That's an entirely appropriate right. four. <laughs> uh, so you kick out, and your feet are just kicking up uh, handfuls of leaf litter, and you kick a tree at one point, and it hurts your ankle a little bit, and you're scratching at this hand, you're trying to pull your hair away, and it just seems to make the situation worse, and another hand comes down over your mouth, and your mm. eyes are wide, and you stare out, and one of the women has darted past you, one of the women, and she's still clutching that chicken, and she's looking at you in wide-eyed, caught in indecision, and then she pushes on and leaves you as you are dragged backwards. Uh, 
I'm still going to be fighting it as much as I can, but I, I think this is probably taking it out of me now, like breath-wise and energy-wise. Yeah, and if you, you struggle and you feel that woundiness pushing into you, you hear something through the air past you and the sound of cutting flesh, like a knife, like, a, like an arrow. And you feel your consciousness dip briefly and you remember King's Landing, you remember an alleyway mm. and a boy captured by a guard. <laughs> what does Tala remember about that incident? Just the blood. The look in that kid's eyes and then the blood soaking into the gaps around the cobbles. And you must have fallen, because now you're on your back in that leaf litter, and as you turn your head, you see a man with an arrow through his neck, and there's a bubbling of blood from his mouth and from the wound. Just blood pushing, pushing to get out of this body. And his eyes are wide like the rabbit's. I am going to be kicking away and whipping around. I've got leaves in my hair at this point, and just... I'm like a fucking wild cornered animal. I'm going to be and getting as far away from all this as I can. Another hand coming towards you, and you remember at the feast how the wills had reached out towards you to help. Were they trying to help? Were they trying to kill you? That man, he had the scorpion helmet, and you remember that looming scorpion knight from the tournament. Come on, we got to go. And the man from before with the scar is next to you. Come on! <laughs> if he's running away, I'm running away. I don't, I don't even really care if I'm running in the same direction. Kind of just thrown up and down his arm. And he grabs your hand and you run. And you are running for a long time through the forest. That's likely to take it out of me. I'll keep up as much as I can, but I think my my end point isn't collapse. My end point is almost passing out. Mm-hmm. Okay, so just make an endurance roll for me, and we'll just see how far Tyler makes it Ooh, conscious. Hang on a sec. There's a thing about this now. So I take minus one on endurance now. <laughs> and it was two before. <laughs> So, let's see how this goes. It's a five. It's not so On bad. a five, you trip over <laughs> your own feet, and that wooziness and just the confusing images just keep coming in your mind. Millie, what is the last thing Tala recalls before the world kind of cascades away? Aster in the hayloft. But his eyes don't seem like his eyes. The face kind of shimmers and morphs. But both of them are laughing. Jamie, the search for Tala is a failure. No one knows anything. Everyone seems suspicious. People are leaving the Tremaine lands. And as you arrive at the hold, you're told Maester Otto has arrived and is in the Maester's quarters, setting himself up. And the guards, kind of below their breath, tell you that he's brought his own men from Gaunt and they're making themselves right at home. What of the Maester? Has he begun work? Yeah, as he's taking that barrel from the kitchens, he's working on it. Had a meeting with Lord Jermaine up in his room. And the King's Guards left with your uncle, my lord. Very well. He will head to the Maester's chambers. And you find the maester there, hard at work, bent low over this scribbled list. The desk with the wine and the vials and various herbs. Good 
Meister. Oh. And he gives you a, a courteous bow. Lord Jamie. A pleasure. Pleasure is all mine. I'm hoping you can do something for this. The healing, the healing will be done in time. That, that's honestly the easiest part of this. What is the hardest? Anyway. Figuring out what advice to give your brother about where to go from here. And why is that so hard? Is it the subject matter you want to go to him with? Not so much the subject matter itself, so much as the width of it. It's a problem that does not have an easy form of attack. Nothing so straightforward. And he kind of turns the list to show you, and it's a list of house names. So you do suspect poison. I've been able to determine that much, yes. Something was added to your wine, whether it was added to your food or not. Unfortunately, I'm not able to determine that. I was not here in time to make that assessment. Such a broad blanket approach. Something usually so precise. Indeed. It means that either somebody was quite intent on making sure that their target was reached, or they had more than one target. An entire house, perhaps? Entire house, but there was more than just the house, there were also guests. Guests of import, and guests of note, and guests with enemies. Speak your mind, Maester. Lord Jamie, at this point, it is my suspicion, dependent on factors, you, your house, or, well, I should say, House Tremaine, could be under the... under the targeting of a grand conspiracy, or... It could be a petty rivalry that's attempting to assert itself, and you just happen to be collateral damage. A petty rivalry, especially a local one, would not have you here helping us. Indeed. Hence why, despite my best efforts, I ruled House Gaunt out. Indeed. As I am told, and he looks back out towards somewhere the guards might be. Charlie, I'd like to get a read on him. Okay, so this will be an awareness empathy test. I think more specifically, I'd mm -hmm. like to see if he's maybe deflecting or if this is somewhat practiced or anything like that, just in case. Yeah, if it's like a performance you're you're being given. Uh, Thirteen against your passive deception, Emma. Uh, he is not being. Uh, he's not being performative about this. He is sincerely concerned. Currently. Otto, has anybody told you about our sister? I've heard that the, there's a search for the Lady Tarla. She's gone missing, and that... That's very troubling. All right. We're all very concerned. 
as well should be, that brings that brings House Gaunt much concern as well, if truth be told. Of course. Of course. There's a lot of goodwill riding on the nuptials between your sister and Lord Wendell. It would be very difficult for all involved if she were not to be found. I very much agree with that. That's also part of why we brought some of the men. We hoped we might aid in the search. I was actually going to prepare to send a raven back to the household and see if we could search the lands from our end. Good. I don't believe she will have crossed the river. Although I can't there imagine is the, how. There is Stonebridge not far. Stonebridge. Admit can it's only been a couple days and she is but a lady. She can get she can travel, but not so far. I have not spoken to my brother yet, sir, but I worry about some kind of abduction. Speak it An softly and put it in your letter, but yes. No. No, no. An abduction would be most trying. And we would very much do well, if that is the case, to work together to make sure that Lady Tarla is safely recovered. I agree. I have really only one other approach, and that is to head to King's Landing once more, meet my sister. Perhaps loudly give people the impression of how easy my ascendancy to Lord of the House might be now, and maybe wanting to thank the people involved. See who shows themselves. I do appreciate that kind of stratagem. Might play well. Uh, the agents I would most be, be looking for would be those of Baratheon. Possibly a will, oddly enough. They are having a bit of internal strife, from what I've heard. And though I don't believe this would be as pertinent, given your proclivities of several years past, but should you be approached by those claiming to be of a Blackfire persuasion, that would be of great interest. It would. Especially for the crown. Very much so, I imagine. But yes, if you were to find something, something of note, something of interest to our shared interests, I'd be most interested in hearing about it. Is there any unsoiled wine yes we took the liberty of bringing some we didn't know how how the supply situation would be and he'll he take he takes a cup and he kind it. of does that really awful like blows into it <laughs> it's just like <laughs> here we go off we go good enough i suppose and awesome's uh Allegra, you reach King's Landing by nightfall and you have this horrible feeling in your stomach. This horrible, unsettled feeling. Something bad is happening. Tala. Something... You need to find Tala and you're tired from the day's ride and Danella has not made it any easier because she's weak. But luckily Cinder did carry her true. And 
your lodgings in King's Landing are not far from the Red Keep. And the court crier is out in the courtyard calling for anyone with last business to join the line. The hand of the king will hear last complaints before he leaves for the reach. Okay, so Allegra will, um, she'll send Danella off to the quarters so she can get a head start and getting rested up. And she'll send uh, her with orders to get cleaned up because she's been on the road, she's covered in mud. She, she kind of did a little fall. Um, so Danella is going to be sent off as Allegra is like going to join this line. Okay. And you join and ahead of you there's 10, maybe 12 people. Most of them nobles or merchants, relatively well off merchants given their clothing. And your stomach flips again as you see Baylor rise from his seat where he had been holding audience and push back into a private chamber and they call an end to the audience today. A number of people are kind of discussing if they should leave or if they can continue and protest and demand that he comes back and hears they have important things they need to talk to him about. Where is the king? Can they not be heard by someone else? And brought out from the room is a man you don't recognize. He has deep tanned skin and dark warm eyes. His clothing, very different from that of court. It's lavish though, all the same, trimmed in bright gold. And he takes Baylor's seat. I'll hear them, bring them forward. And he kind of sits as if king in the seat at this high table. And his accent you recognize as Bravosi, which is in keeping with the appearance. My name is Belarion Otheris, and I will hear your complaints. I act on behalf of the king in this court. Hurry up. And he kind of waves people forward, and he has a short but charming manner to him. He's very to the point. He's like, and what do you want from me? Yes, we can do that. No, we can't do that. It's, it's that kind of thing. And occasionally he'll laugh and he'll kind of undercut someone's complaint with something else. And the line is moving quickly in front of you as he's processing these people. You'll come back tomorrow. This isn't a matter for me. Maybe the queen can deal with such complaints. And there's some laughter. You're not sure what the man had asked, but it seems to amuse everyone that it's being deferred to the queen rather than anyone else. And you are next in line and he waves you forward as he makes a note with an elegant quill on the parchment in mm -hmm. front of him. And my lady, what can I do for you today? And Allegra will, you know, she'll do like a little bow. Like, my lord, I bring grave news. I am Allegra of House Dorsey, but I am here representing my maiden house. You see, we were attacked. My lady, what is your maiden house? My maiden house is House Tremaine. Ah, yes, yes, I remember hearing something about this. And what we would you like me to do? For the time being, I request that any and all arrangement between my house and House Gaunt is annulled immediately. I suspect that they may be behind the poisoning which killed my uncle. And she's like, she's getting a little strop on. And I request that a maester from the Citadel is sent to the house to investigate, because currently there's a maester from House Gaunt, and if you pardon me saying, my lord, I don't trust him as far as I could throw him. My lady, you look to have strong hands, but I take it you imply not very far. No. And she gives a little smile. You have evidence that it is this house gaunt that has trespassed against you and your family. Has assassinated your uncle. I suspect so, yes. There had been secret communications between a member of house gaunt and someone within our household. 
our previous maester was a loan from House Gaunt, and he proved entirely unuseful. I suspect it was possibly even him that poisoned us. And you can see kind of hovering around those uh, assistants who are probably associated with the Master of Whispers, that kind of a figure. And he's waved over by Blarian and the little bird whispers in his ear and he's waved away. I am told there is an arrangement between your house and House Gaunt, arranged by this court. Yes. My youngest sister, Lady Tala, is due to be wed to Lord Wendell Gaunt. All right, bring me evidence tomorrow and I shall make a decision on this matter. We would also like to hear from the House Bywater, which I believe is to which your uncle belongs. Yes, my lord. If I may have time to send a raven, then, to collect such evidence. They are yours. And he kind of waves in a vague direction. Mm Mm-hmm. And so she is gonna she's gonna bow and say, Oh, thank you so much for your time. My lady, do you have a particular person in mind who perpetrated this from House Gaunt? You can see he's finalizing his notes. I do not, unfortunately. Well, who sent the letters? And she takes a moment. There was a daughter of House Gaunt, Della. I have heard that women enjoy prison. It has been known. What do you prefer, my lady? And she fixes him with a definite flirty smile. I wouldn't dream of doing such things, my lord. Of course not. I shall see you tomorrow then, Lady Dorsey. My lord. Your complaint is recognized by the court of King Daeron II. And you have access to the King's Ravens. And Allegra is going to, after she's dismissed, uh, walk off to the Ravens, looking very pleased with herself. Susie, um, just for that whole encounter, I'd like you Mm -hmm. to make a persuasion charm. Charm? Yes. All right. Can, no, not going to say that. Um, (laughs) all right. (laughs) What were you going to say? What was she like? No. No, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, okay, I don't need to drop any because I don't have any dice and charm. Um, her charm lies other way. Um, okay. That is, hang on, a 15, but I do get to re-roll ones on persuasion. Uh, oh, so that's going to be a 19. 19. All right. He watches as you leave and then goes back to his notes and reviews them. And that's kind of what you see Uh, but I'll make a note of that for next time as we now know how you did with your dramatic announcement in court that's me I've always got to be dramatic in court all the time and people (laughs) do kind of discuss what you've announced it's not often someone walks into the court and goes hey my neighbor's done murdered my uncle take it (laughs) but it has been known to happen Adeline, you search through the night, uh, sorry, towards the nightfall, um, and you don't turn up any more information beyond corroborating that a boat has gone missing on the river, but a number of boats were also damaged by the storm. So no one is willing to say, yeah, it was my boat, and it's definitely missing. There's Mm -hmm. an unease, which is what Jamie found as well. Uh, do you continue to look? Do you go further afield, or do you return to the hold? I think I continue, because... This is my only chance. If they're here... Okay, I so... Find them. Um, if I leave back, I can't go 
go any further. And I'd like you to make a another test for your investigations. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want to talk to people, like I said before, it's a persuasion, um, convince to get them to tell you things, or intimidate. Uh, you can apply that as well. Or mm-hmm. um, awareness, notice for, or survive track for kind of more physical evidence hunting. I think I'm going to go with the awareness notice. You know, just try and use her instincts and her um, her keen eye from years of doing this to figure out something. That's going to be... Oh, this is the complicated one. That's right. Go on. All right. Three roll ones. Sixteen. Okay, on a 16, you have pushed to the the far edges of the mainlands and you are pushing back in the other direction once more. Um, When someone comes riding to you and your guards kind of attempt to wave them away, um, because this person seems to be acting very strangely, very dramatic kind of lolling around in their seat. Oh. oh. Um, but as I they get mean... closer, you notice their face is very pallid and there's a sickness about them. It's one that you, you've seen House Tremaine recently. Mm-hmm. And... I'll have them stop. And they stop barely reining in their horse. And they've come riding to you, they explain, because they saw the lady. They saw her go. Which direction? Where'd she go? Up the river. And they point. Was she with anybody? Same way. The Was same she with? way the devil went. The same way. The devil, what? Speak clearly. The horse, Lady Adeline. Oh. I watched it go. And you, like, peering through the, it's kind of that dusk light is getting kind of difficult to see too far. And you stare at that pale face and you recognize this is someone who attended the, um, the kitchen gardens of House Tremaine. Kind of mm-hmm. kept your plants and vegetables in order. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Why don't you head back to... I'll have one of my guards escort you back to the hole. They can take care of you there. I'll find her. The person nods, and you see them sway in their saddle, in their saddle and then kind of slump. Your guards kind of look to you like, you sure you want to bring a sick person back? If it's the same sickness as the... what happened at the hold... You shouldn't have to worry about it. And they nod and they kind of grab onto the rein of the horse so that they can lead it, turn back towards the hold. To and be, with your awareness, to be, wait. Sorry. Oh, I would say, to be, to be safe. Leave them outside, have someone take them, look at them outside of the hold. I don't yes, want a, if this is the same thing, I don't want to bring sickness into the house again. And they seem to agree this is a better plan, and they're kind of keeping their distance, um, pulling mm-hmm. the horse at kind of the furthest tether they can. And with that awareness, as you look around, you look back towards that far boundary, upriver, inland, and you th- feel like someone is watching something is watching from that direction and you notice overhead a raven flying straight towards house tremaine and that is why we're going to end today's session we're ending a little bit early tonight because unfortunately due to the time desync uh Mm. players need to go run to other games um so we're gonna allow them their brief break so they can get to those other games uh, I'm going to very quickly go around and let people just shout out 
where your games are tonight, Nuno and um, Shauna, so people can go and check that out. And then if people stay in their seats, I will organize a raid for the end of stream. Thank you so much, Millie. It is so great to have you back. I it's can't so wait nice to be back. Next week. Mwah. Good luck with the builders. Shauna, where you. can I we find it. you tonight? Um, you can find me tonight on the Onyx Hatha channel, where we'll be streaming um, Seattle by Streetlight. Console Darkness game. It is the finale, and that is at 8 p.m. Eastern time. We might be finding a goose, so who knows? Oof. Big finale, big goose. Nuno, where can we find you tonight? You can find me in exactly one hour over in the Chromatic Chimera Twitch channel, where I play a Eberron campaign. It is not the finale, it's about the halfway episode, but hey, if you like Eberron, come and hang out. <laughs> Please do go and check that out. And Sam, when are you next back in action? Uh, Thursday, we're back with After the Fire, so you can see that follow Black Cats on Twitch. Uh, follow me around the internet, RPG Webby, and follow Black Cats around the internet, either Black Cats Gaming or follow Black Cats elsewhere. And Susie, you shouted out The Witcher. Remind us what time that is tomorrow. Yep, that's 8.30 p.m. GMT, 4.30 EDT on twitch.tv forward slash Susanna Grace. And Matt, I hope you're free next week because it sounds like we need you back. Always, Charlie, for this, anytime. Awesome. Oh, um, please do go and check out Matt's Dreadful Beats in Baravia, which I believe is on this weekend, Sunday. What time is that, Matt? That is going to be at 9.30 EDT. Uh, what would that be? 1.30 AM GMT. So catch the VOD afterwards if you're on the uh, over in Great Britain. We always love seeing people uh, show up. Awesome. And remember, if you are watching the VODs, if you're watching this VOD on YouTube, please do leave those likes and comments. And that's the same for all creatives. We appreciate it. And the algorithm acknowledges you. So it's very important to us. Uh, I'm not going to lie. That's the truth of the matter. Uh, but yes, I love reading your comments. Uh, leave comments oh, on hell hoops, the algorithm. And also, <laughs> and <laughs> also <laughs> whom's to stab if you have any. Please head over to Discord. I will be hanging out there. There's a lot we didn't get to do today that I'm looking forward to doing next week. But if you want to see some more action here on Encounter Roleplay, we are back tomorrow with Modiphius and Paradox Entertainment's Fall of London for Vampire the Masquerade. It's a brand new chronicle that Will and the gang are playing through. And that is on tomorrow at 4 p.m. EDT, which is 8 p.m. GMT. That shows... I'm, I'm not going to discuss time zones. Time zones have happened. Check out our pinned tweet. That's where all the updates are. And we will see you very soon. Take care, everyone. Try not to roll too many net ones because we laugh at you like we do at Nuno. Love you. Bye. Before we begin today's show, I would like to take some time to remind you about our sponsors. Fantasy Grounds, a virtual tabletop of choice. All of the beautiful maps and roles you see tonight are done using Fantasy Grounds, which you can try for free at fantasygrounds.com. 
You can also get all of your miniatures from Wayland Games. Go to waylandgames.co.uk and get yourself a huge range of D&D, Warhammer and 40k minis for up to 20% off regular retail price. And Tabletop Loot, who sell incredible dice. Go and check them out at tabletoploot.com.